Hi, welcome to our new 7-day build of the Sonic model throttling device with which we will throttle amateur models such like these with aluminum tubing like that. But how are you going to accomplish that? In a nutshell, we put a solid rocket model into an aluminum pipe and actuate the aluminum pipe back and forth with the servo model. We convert the angular movement of the servo model with the help of WAC to a linear movement. For better illustration, my future self will insert here an animation of the device. Pretty neat, right? Short disclaimer. This is only the small beginning. For the future, we have planned many crazier ideas than that one. So, it's maybe worth subscribing to us. But enough for talking, let's go into SolidWorks. After getting into SolidWorks, we need to create some reference models. Because without good reference models, the finished design will not fit. I speak from experience here. The design is split into many smaller parts, beginning with the servo mount, which also holds the model in place, and it is a mounting point for our testing rig. Besides the mount, I designed a rack that is driven by the servo gear. The aluminium pipe will be glued with two component adhesive to the tri rack. Colored all the three printed parts green for better uh, reference will be made out of resin using our photon mono printer. I also designed a small test stand that holds our test setup and provides a place for our computer. The test stand will be CNC milled out of plywood with our DIY built MPCNC. In the future we want to make some parts out of aluminium using our lathe and CNC mill. So let's start making those parts. After we have made all the parts required, we can start assembling. But at first we sanded all the wooden parts. After the sanding we screwed all the wooden parts together. Next we mount the load cell onto the wooden mount. And then we attached the computer. In our test attempts we rely on our own developed flight computer SPICY, which exceeds all necessary requirements. After the resin parts are cured, we can test if everything fits. Here, in the animation, everything fits. In reality, none of the parts fit properly. The main reason for this was the distortion of the parts during the print process. Due to the high distortion of the prints, our rack that should perfectly fit around the aluminum tube Cracks directly. So we measured everything again and wrote an improvement list, which was then applied in SolidWorks. After another four hours of waiting for the printer, we could finally screw everything together, and it worked. A really magical moment for us. Here we have mounted everything together, but there's one thing you see directly and hear directly. The linear gearbox has a really poor efficiency, you can see on the, the marks on the rack and on the drive gear, so we need to redesign the drive gear from the servo motor.
After a small adjustment, in certain works, the completed drive train runs like clockwork, made in China. This is due to the less action area on every teeth of the drive gear. Now it can move freely back and forth. There was another problem. During the aluminum tube and the motor was quite too tight. Though in often cases it fits perfectly, but if the motor winding was a bit off, it blocked. So we grinded the inner wall of the tube and now it fits perfectly. But before we can start testing, we still have to wire up Spicy. Here you can see the complete setup. In front we have Spicy with the 4S LiPo connected to it. On the back we have a simply breadboard with many jumper cables on it. On this end we have our analog to digital converter for the load cell. Then we have our small NPN transistor that turns the model on or off. Here we have a half bridge, but uh, this model is not working properly with our Teensy because the Teensy has only operation voltage of 3.3 volts and the half bridge needs 5 volts. That's why in future we will design our own half bridge that works with a Teensy. This is not the prettiest thing we ever built, but it works and it's only a prototype, so it do the job. But there's a catch. Several models, in case our, is designed to rotate from 0 to 180 degrees. But in our drivetrain, we need a couple of full rotations. So, are we going to fix it? In every servo, there's a small PCB a converter that converts the PVM signal from the microcontroller, the QD cycle, and, co and converts it to the angular position. If we open up the servo and overpass the small PCB and connects plus and minus directly to the motor, though it's just a motor with a gearbox. After we had adjusted the servo motor and written the code for SPICY, we could finally start testing. We have made several tests to collect data. Many tests without the active throttle control and many tests with the throttle control on. After the motor ignites, the servo motor pushes the tube half rate down the whole actuating leg. After a short break, roughly 400 to 500 milliseconds, the servo pushes the tube back to the end. With this movement, we have also characterized the behavior during the displacement. And yes, it is quite turbulent, but definitely repeatable. In any case, we are very satisfied with the results. We have reduced the thrust by more than 5 newtons. That's awesome! You are probably thinking how this thing works physically. In short, our structure throttles the model with the help of the Kushnik effect. The Kushnik effect was characterized by Richard Kushnik in the late 60s. How the effect works is not so simple, that's a topic for another video. So maybe it's a reason to describe to our channel. What do we do now with our design? First, we have to solve a big problem. Currently, SPICY controls the servo model blindly. It tells the model to turn off for 5 seconds, or roughly 500 milliseconds, turn on and off. That's the whole control we have over our polling device. In future, we will be using a linear potentiometer that sits roughly in this area here. Though with this feedback of our potentiometer, SPICY exactly knows where the aluminium tube is. So in the tier or here, SPICY knows it. With this feedback, we can adjust the throttling if it not as it should. In this way, we can reduce unpredictability, but this is also a topic for another video. We hope you enjoyed the video and I have now subscribed to our channel.